my name is Victor and welcome to my PC build. It's been a while since I built, built one before, probably like 10 years or so, a little bit more than that. I'm building one today and I'm going to have you guys join me as I think this through. Um, first I want to give you some information. Why am I building a PC? Technology has passed by my PC. Um, you know, every about six to eight months, um, things with PC technology changes. It gets smarter, it gets faster, it gets smaller. So, you know, every few years you probably need a PC. Now, if your needs don't change that much, you probably can get away with like maybe 10, 15 years if your needs don't change, you know. My needs have changed. Um, right now, as I'm building this stuff, there's a pandemic going on right now, um, which caused a few things, a little ripple action. Um, one, uh, my church is now doing its um, services online, and I'm in... I'm involved in the whole um, production for video on YouTube, um, which also led me to think about doing a video for YouTube on this. So I work with the video production for the YouTube stuff. Um, second, like I said, the pandemic. So I'm a teacher. I'm doing a lot of teaching from home, distance learning. So now it's even more taxed into my computer. So all those three things kind of combine to say, hey, you got to get a new PC. Okay, i also like to shout out a few people in this. Um, um, number one, Mr. Niver. Mr. Niver um, is a fellow um, um, teacher with me, and he's built computers before, and he kind of walked me through how to, you know, get my, get my nerve up to doing this again. And he also gave me this case that you're going to see that I'm, that I'm using. Um, also, a shout out Rubenoid, one of my students. He kind of gave me some, some tips here and there. So like to help him with that and also like to shout out my mother and my wife because they're my mother and my wife. Um, they've been pretty supportive and helped me, you know, get this stuff and try this out. So without further ado, I want to go through um, how I picked out my parts and stuff like that. Okay, I'm hoping that this all works out and you can see the spreadsheet that I made to assemble all these parts, you know, my parts list and picking these out. But I want to just introduce all my parts I'm going to attempt to put together. So, first off, I have my um, Intel chip. When I did my research, it seemed my Intel is a little bit better on video production stuff than AMD. I'm actually an AMD type of guy the last couple of times I did this. But Intel went out this time. So, Intel chip that went, that now that dictated the motherboard, which was I have an a Asus motherboard here a Prime Z390. Um, then we go over to the power supply, which is from Cost Air, um, a, a 450 water, um, a rip jaw um, RAM cards, they're two 8 meg RAMs. And then we come over to the, the cooler for the chip, which is also from Cost Air. Um, it's one of those radiator type chips. That, um, Coolers, which is new to me, so I'm just going to be adventurous on that on that tip. Um, the video card, which is the other thing that's very important to me, which made sure I had NVIDIA in the video card, and this is a GeForce also from Asus, so hopefully these two will match up pretty well. Um, I have a old-fashioned regular hard drive, mechanical hard drive, a Seagate. This is a four um, terabyte. I went back and forth between a two terabyte and a four terabyte. There wasn't much of a price um, advantage by getting a four, but just have more space. Then over here for some more um, storage space, I have two SSDs, um, 500 a piece. I got these from Staples because it was just same price as if I went to Newegg um, pretty well. I got this case from my friend, Mr. Niver. Um, very pretty case, gonna light up and everything like that, hopefully get to see that and then finally I got had to buy windows all over again um, windows 10 my windows will not transfer over like I said it's a refurbished computer it's an OEM so you can't transfer those um, over but I will be able to transfer over uh, my office suite hopefully so these are all my parts that I'm going to try to put together um, today okay so now we've come to the motherboard part so this is the Prime 390A motherboard from Asus. So um, 
just in case it came in. One of the videos I watched said, you know, basically sitting it on the box is probably the best way to handle it. Um, I'm going to take it out of its protective case and start working on it. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put in some of the um, DRAM cards in first. And what you'll see here is they have these little tabs on here in which you op open them up and you're going to drop them into these slots. If you read through the manual, which I made sure I read through my manuals, um, processor and for the card, it basically is going to be every other slot. So it's usually like the furthest one away from the chip and going every other slot. So that makes the second and the fourth slot. So that's what I'm going to do first. I purchased two Ripjaw 8 gig 6. Okay, so if you notice in here, hopefully, hopefully you guys can see this. And these things are, like I said, this stuff's going to be pretty hard. It's kind of foolproof. There's a, this has a notch in here in which it's not centered. So therefore, they're only going to go in one way. And what's going to happen is we're going to stick it into the slot in it, and it's going to kind of click into place. So here, like I'm looking at it, I'm about to put it in. The slots don't match up, so that means I need to flip it around. So we put it in. And it should click right in. The tab kind of folds in. I got two of these for a total of 16 gigs of VRAM. Now once again, talked about order of operations. This, I am choosing to go this route because I don't want stuff like in the way of each other when I'm putting them in. Um, well, after you put in the chip, and then putting the cooling system, a lot of this stuff is going to kind of going to be covered in the way. So I'm trying to avoid having to move things around and have to take things in and out. Okay. So next, now we finish with that. We're going to put in the chip. Okay. Here's the chip. Nice protective case. It's going to go into the slot right here. Um, now it's a very delicate piece of a piece of equipment electronics um, you don't want to handle it a lot you're going to basically mess with this thing as far as only touch it from the sides place it in drop 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 it in and that'll be it it's not much to the, to the chip except you want to be careful not to handle it a lot has kind of a lever system here Okay, I'll pull that lever out, open this up, exposes everything. Now, what we're going to see, and I'm going to take a picture and hopefully put this closer for you guys. You're going to see that this chip only will fit in a certain way. There's like little notches type of things in the corners. And the chip itself has a, has a um, arrow in one corner which is going to indicate where we got to go with everything. Okay, I turn the motherboard around so you have a better view of this. I'm going to put the chip in right now. I just check to make sure which way it should go in. And like I said, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to handle it too much. As you can see, the chip very delicate piece of equipment. Just put my fingers on the outside and going to place it in and then close the lever on it. And there she goes. She's in there. Okay, I got all the screws out for the motherboard to go into its casing. Um, so right now, I'm trying to be as gentle with the motherboard as possible. I'm first trying to check for like if there's any like plastic um, stuff on here. Like right here, this is plastic um, just covering, you know, just to keep it pretty, I'm taking some of that stuff off. 
I just want to make sure I don't forget this type of stuff on here because later on when the computer gets nice and hot this extra plastic is not going to be desirable. Next we're going to have to switch up because now I have to start getting ready for the cooler and this plate has to has to go on to the back to be able to hold the cooler down. So before I can put the the little tray for the motherboard, I gotta put this on because it'll then be blocked and I won't be able to get to it. So that's gonna be next. So there's the plate on. The next step as far as keeping this plate on is putting the standoffs in. Now, by the way, along the way on this, I'm trying to keep it as neat as possible. First, I don't want to get stuff mixed up. And second, I don't want to lose parts. So, I kind of took everything off the table here to make it clear. That's done. Now we go tie it down to where it's got to okay, go. Okay, so we have to make sure we line up our input outputs, our I.O., with our I.O. shield. Here. And then we'll screw everything down. in the case. There's a lot of um, loose wires in a case. They obviously got places to go, but they're just going to be in the way for right now. So just moving them out the way while I put this stuff in. Now, since this case was somewhat removable, the inside parts for the motherboard, um, there's a little like retaining clip that comes with this particular one to hold it in place. It's not in there nice and secure. Okay, I'm about to put in the power supply. Now, like I said, order of operations. I watched a few videos. And they've kind of gone, you know, pretty logical situation, but it seems like it really depends on what you're working with. So, like I said, this cooling system for the chip down here seems to have, it takes up a lot of space. So, I right now need to put in right here is the CPU um, power that comes from the power supply. So, once again, the fear is is that once I put in some of these other things, this is going to be covered up and kind of hard to get to. Now, this case is pretty good because it kind of opens up from both sides and I should be able to get to it, but I'm kind of trying to make sure I don't take any chances on this. So I'm going to put the power supply in and make sure I at least can um, get these things in. Because like I said, this area right here seems like it's going to be cluttered with the cooling system. So I want to take care of these things up here make sure I can get to them. So next is the power supply. Now you'll see there's a fan on here at the bottom um, and it's basically the only direction that we can put it. Some computers I've looked at um, when they put them together you do have the option of turning it another way but right now if I fan 
use the fan to go up, it would have nowhere really it was, it was sent in the air. So, and cooling is going to be important in any computer system. Okay, it's all the way in. Turn on the side, and you'll see right here. I'm going to stick the screws in and be done with the power supply. Okay, we got some things done now for, for a set for a while. We're going to move this case out the way. I am going to work with the cooling system right now. The cooling system is a radiator type system in which this part here will go over the CPU, the, the chip that we bought, and it's um, water cooled, I guess liquid cooled. So what's going to happen is it's going to take the heat from the chip, pull it away, and just like in a car's radiator, we're going to use the water to kind of pull it away and kind of vent it out to a spot over here in which that water could then be cooled down and come back. So a little closed loop system of keeping the chip cold. So right now you're going to see on here it's embossed which direction the fan is spinning and which direction is the air flowing. So right here it's saying that the spinning you know, if you're looking at it this way, be counterclockwise, sending the air out this way. So as far as um, anything that's in the back of the computer, my research shows you want it flowing out. So you want to have stuff flowing from the front to the back of the PC or from the bottom up. Or if you have enough fans, you could do both. But that's the flow you want. Uh, this is how it's going to look when it's done. Okay, figuring out my next move, I am, as I said, going to install the cooler. And it took a little time to try to figure out which way should it go. The other thing is, I've got to put in the two fans. So what I did is the spans, like I said, is going it's on the radiator sandwich between the two fans. So I installed one fan on it and now I just have to do the fan that goes on to the actual case. So the fan that's going on the case that then screws it into the radiator is going to be in. I'm just going to let this hang for now because this has to go on the computer and I want that just do that separately. I'm not going to try to do that beforehand and then have stuff moving on it. So that's next. a little snafu um, my S SDD cards that I planned on putting in I need a special adapter to put it into the computer um, so I, Mr. Niver did give me something to as an adapter for this but I could not figure out how to use it so I went um, this is at Best Buy five bucks and it actually holds two SSDs so I'll be able to put both SSDs into this so I'm going to just put this together um, you probably saw a little montage of putting in all the different wires into the computer. That's probably like the hardest part because um, they're very small. You're putting in, you got to coordinate what wires are going from the case to the motherboard. And it's a lot of like jargon that you might not know off the top of your head. So take your time and figure out which wire goes to what. Um, what will happen though will... Hopefully you don't plug anything in the wrong spot. For the most part, you'll just see something doesn't work, like a temperature gauge or USB, um, something like that might not work. So remember, this case is a little bit older, so some of the acronyms and letters that they used then is not the same ones that they use now. Okay, so I'm going to get to putting this together. with screws um, I had to search thank God for a bunch of bags of screws um, the, can, the bracket needed longer screws to be able to reach into 
the adapter. So found some long screws to be able to make it from here to there. The reason being is there's a rubber gasket here that um, took up some space. So, so now we're going to connect these bad boys up. It's probably best to do it before you put it into the case so it's easier to handle. I offset it a little bit so it'll be easy to plug in. Now, put it out into the case. Get a little click. I'm going to connect the motherboard to these hard drives. In the manual I have six possible ways, six possible things I could hook up to the, to, to the motherboard. So this one that has somewhat of a L shape to it. So just trying to be thoughtful about this and put it in Okay, next I'm going to put in my video card. Here's my video card. Um, kind of one of the main reasons why I had to switch computers. Okay, this is a GeForce um, GTX. It's a 1650. I'm not exactly sure what that, all that means, but it had something to do with um, the level of the chip that's inside in here. It's an NVIDIA chip. So... This is going to go in here, as you can see on this back end. See how it has like uh, two tabs here? It kind of means it's going to take up two slots um, from the back computer. So, as you can see in here, I have um, a few slots open. Um, I got to fill in these other ones, but I'm just going to move some things around um, to prep for this to go in. This had almost the least amount of instruction manual stuff like that come with it it's basically just gonna plug it in um, hook hook it up to some power get no actually just hook it up and it go so next is to put this in so I'm first gonna get these thumb screws out um, move some things around so I have a space for it to go into ready to box this bad boy up however the last thing we got to get into is cabling and you get a little tour of the inside of this bad boy because you're going to see there's some tie downs that I'm gonna do or have already done um, I kind of was doing it a little bit along the way when stuff started getting in the way okay so the point of cabling cabling is just a fancy word I've heard them use to hey all your wires and stuff like that, get them tucked in nice and neat and out the way. You might think this is just a, you know, oh, pet peeve type of thing. People just want to tie all these things down. But really what comes down to, see this area right here? I'm trying to main part in here. All of this you want to keep cool, right? We talked about this already. We got a bunch of fans. We got this big heavy-duty um, radiator cooler, all that type of stuff. So, we want to keep this stuff cool, and what happens is, there's going to be a lot of fans running around here, which is going to end up collecting dust inside of your computer. So, when it starts collecting dust, that adds to the heat. So, what you want to do is, um, all these wires are spots where it's going to collect dust on. So, what we're trying to do is not have a big spider web in here, try to tuck everything away. It's a fan here. There's a fan on the um, video card. There's obviously the dual fans that sandwich this radiator. There's a fan on on the 
power supply and I feel like I'm forgetting another one but um, most people other people also add fans I've even looked at this the motherboard has a little bracket that you could use to post a little fan in the middle in here so you want to get the airflow you want to keep it cool and like I said that brings along dust so I am tying down and you kind of it's different for each computer you got to see like what makes sense all right so um, some things like this big um, motherboard power cord it's a big heavy duty one I kind of like let it loop here and then whittle on the side down there which I'm going to tie down and then you kind of notice like oh some other things run along the same path I had a couple of these Molex um, connectors for some of the fans um, had to be done so I am going to tie them down where it makes sense with some of the other stuff and not have a bunch of wires hanging around if possible um, also it was a little bit hectic over here I think if I was to do this again in the future I'll probably space out the, the hard drives a little bit more because I end up having some of these wires folding over themselves which is not going to be a big deal um, this is the side of the the PC is going to have a window that you can look in so I'll be able to see if this dust is starting to collect though in these areas or whatever but for the most part like I did I kind of like invert flip these wires to go in instead of out these for the two SSDs did not have room to do that so it's just going to hopefully just lay down like that and that's basically it so I'm going to finish some cabling and then we're going to close this bad boy up Okay, we're about to plug this up and fire it up for the first time. Now, one good thing about this uh, motherboard, another feature is it has an LED in here. I'm going to zoom in on this later. An LED kind of like to go through all the checks with you. And if it stops at a particular point where it has a problem, it will light up that one spot. So it will let us know if we you know put in the dram in wrong or there's no power there's no VGA that type of thing it will let us know um, that we have a problem in that particular spot if it works so, the monitor is going to come up with a bunch of stuff they call BIOS I gotta look that up I'll probably put it on the screen but but BIOS as far as the motherboard configures everything and says how this thing is going to boot up every time you see it um, nowadays the booting up process is a lot faster you don't see a lot of what we call DOS stuff anymore. So that will be, we'll work on this, and then once everything is set, then I can start loading software onto here. So we're going to start up. I'll turn on the power supply, and start up the computer. You can see the, the onboard LEDs are starting to go through its sequence. If it stops in any particular spot, we know we have to go back and figure out what's wrong. Okay, we're going to try this again. Um, seemed like there's a problem with the, with the video card, possibly the installation, so I reinstalled it to see if that's it. Everything, seems, everything else seems to be working, but we're not getting display. So let's try it again. It's up and working. So yeah. overall, it wasn't that bad. Um, is you do get a cost benefit. You get a more powerful computer, most likely. The only downside is you are the one that has to take care of all the maintenance and upkeep and warranties and stuff like that. To that point, now that we finished it, go through all your booklets, take care of all the warranties, register whatever you got to register, make sure you get the bet the most out of your computer and have some type of security if anything goes wrong okay yeah you guys have a good luck with yours god bless okay.